Fairy creatures and mines. There are so many of these little folk that dwell underground where the minerals and rocks lie hidden as treasure in the earth. Cold, damp and wet places. Tunnels that lead into darkness. Of course, tragedies happen often in these dangerous places. And so it is no wonder that mines have a folklore of their own. Let us look at some of these strange and very secretive mine folk. The culture of mining goes far back into our human history, into a time immemorial, and yet the scars and holes and tunnels left on our planet, they tell their own tales of human hands searching for the precious mineral wealth within the earth. From the most basic tools of antler and stone, to the present day super complex machinery used to find these resources, one thing ties us to past excavations people. People and their superstitions, their fears and hopes. Mines are intimidating and dangerous places. Should you ever visit an abandoned one opened for tourist visits, even they seem strange. We are out of our element under the ground. And so we humans had our talismans and our totems, our rituals and the things that give us comfort in scary places. With a heightened sense of awareness underground, our hearing becomes sharper, our eyes fight to see in the darkness. Mining communities became very strong ones depending on each other, for support and comradeship, and through hardships. And from these close-knit communities came the stories of things seen or heard underground. Strange people, small, fleeting, sometimes mischievous. These are the mine fairies, goblins, some were once gods. Today let us look at just a few of the creatures that work alongside the miners in the places deep below the ground. The knocker is a creature found in Celtic Cornwall, Kerno in the local language, in the southwest of England. Cornwall for thousands of years was an incredibly important place producing copious amounts of tin. Dotted across the Cornish landscape are the ruins of so many engine houses, chimneys from the era of steam-driven mining, romantic ruins and buildings sometimes clinging to the cliff faces of the shore. And deep underground in these places the knockers have their homes. The Cornish miners' daily food a ways back was the Cornish pasty, a meat and vegetable folded pie with a very thick crust edge. Miners would hold this crust to eat the sometimes half sweet, half savoury pasty, the edible part being kept clean from dirty hands and fingers, and the crusts were always left for the knocker as a gift, as a request for their help for good mining they would often lead miners to where the rich seams of ore could be found, and so often the knockers would warn the miners of danger, mine collapses about to happen. So, what does the knocker look like? He's apparently small, roughly two foot or just over half a metre tall, with large head, skinny wrinkled body, overly long arms carrying old fashioned lamps and pickaxes. Sometimes they have white beards and dressing clothes similar to old-fashioned mining clothes. They are known as mischief makers. Sometimes tools placed down would disappear. Food also or candles would be blown out. But in general they were hidden companions of the Cornish miners. Friendly in nature and a comfort to the men. In history, women and children also toiled underground and the knockers were friends to these too. Some mining communities would have it that the knockers were created from the spirits of miners who died underground. The knocker name comes from the knock knock knocking that the miners would hear as they too tapped away at the walls of the mines. 
Sometimes the knocking would lead miners to richer seams of ore. The miners would stop their tapping on the rocks to listen more attentively, to hear where the knocker was leading them, only for the knocker to then go silent. And it was said that the sound of the knocker's hammering is different to that of a human noise, so they always knew which was the knocker and which was a human. Should anyone disrespect or anger the knocker, as with most helpful to human fairy creatures, they will turn dangerous and wicked. They might lead miners down fragile tunnels, maybe even cause fires and explosions from the deadly mine gases. With their wealth of knowledge of mining, Cornish miners were valued all around the world in mining industry in the 1800s and these men had opportunity to travel and emigrate to many different countries where their expertise was needed. And of course one of these countries was the United States, especially in the Pennsylvania area where they became known as Cousin Jacks. With these Cornish miners travelled the Knockers, and once everyone, human and fairy, had settled, the Knockers there became known as the Tommy Knockers. No Cornish miner would enter a new mine until the management assured them that the knockers were already accepted and living happily down there. Of course, with the gold rush era, the Cornish miners spread over to Colorado, Nevada and California. The Tommy knockers travelled too and became part of the gold mining culture, although here the knockers became to be accepted as more spirit-like than an actual fairy creature. In the United States, recorded respect for the Tommyknockers lasted well into the mid to late 1900s. One mine closed and sealed up in the 1950s enraged the local Cornish heritage miners who petitioned the former owners to open a seal and allow the knockers to leave and find other mines to live in. The mine owners agreed and opened a way for the fairy creatures to leave. Cobbly now are mine creatures who have their coal mine and slate quarry homes in the Celtic country of Wales. These are gnome-like, a little smaller than the knocker, quite ugly in appearance, and as with the knocker, they dress in small, old-fashioned, ragged mine clothes. The Welsh miners considered that they were a fairy race that had come to the human mines from their mountain cave homes secret places that no human could see. Although there is a one tale of a man who sighted the Cobbly now at their usual invisible work, recorded in the late 1800s. A William Evans of Haverdavel, a man known for his truthfulness and very well respected in his community, was crossing the Beacon Mountains. It was very early in the morning as he walked, he passed by a Coblinow coal mine, and there he saw the Coblinow hard at work. Some were cutting into the rock for coal, some filling sacks, some loading sacks onto the backs of small Welsh ponies, and all fell completely silent in Evans' ears. William Evans was astounded and also very impressed by the sight of these fairy creatures as he knew that there was no mine at that place at all. Another strange Coblinow sighting, this time at a place called Kai Callet at Boffery, and sighted by four friends, a boy and three girls. The boy and one of the girls were sister and brother, and this time it was not even a mine setting. They were playing in the fields here and were near a stile close to Lanellud House. Here they saw 15 or 16 cobbly now in the middle of a field, dancing a Morris dance style, and yet wilder and faster. They were wearing red and yellow kerchiefs around their heads and were gnome-like in visual appearance. One of the cobbly now noticed they were being watched and ran towards the children who were now terrified. Barbara Jones was over the stile first, followed by her sister, then Egbert Williams, and he dragged his own sister over the stile. They were barely safe when the Coblenow had his hand on the stile and he leaned on it, glaring at them fiercely. A hairy fellow, 
copper-coloured of skin and very menacing. The children ran to the nearby big house and called for the adults to help them. But by the time the adults had found the place described by the children, all the cobbler now had gone. These are friendly creatures in the main, helpful to the human miners. They work hard and constantly, but their work never ends. They are known to load ore into small buckets and turn the old machinery, but still accomplishing very little in their own work. These mine fairies are also known to tap the rocks where rich veins are found. The sound of the cobbling hour are strange. The knocking on the rocks is like nothing a human would create. Long sounds that fill the mine tunnels long after the silence of machinery and talking is done. Of course, it is dangerous to anger or insult the cobbler now. At the very least, they will throw stones at the offending miner. At the worst, they can cause landslides and mine collapses. Like Cornwall, Wales is an intensely mined area of the United Kingdom, coal being the main mining industry here. And like the Cornish miners, the Welsh were internationally respected for their bravery and expertise. These men and women emigrated around the world, taking with them their skills and their fairy folk. The Welsh miners travelled and settled in all the parts of the Americas, both north and south, and there are even still Welsh-speaking areas of South America to this very day. Blue caps are English mine fairies, mainly found on the borderlands of the countries of England and Scotland. Like the goblin hour knockers, if they are treated with respect by the miners, they will lead them to rich veins of minerals and ore, or even warn of imminent tunnel collapse and dangerous gases. These hard-working fairies expect to be paid in cash, left in the mines in quiet corners where they will not be seen, collecting their earnings. Their pay was the going rate of a putter, a mine worker who would have pushed the mine carts underground to be filled with rock and then brought back to the work face. And they would accept no more and no less than that exact amount. There were tales told of miners who had seen blue caps flickering in and out of flames, their forms settling on one of the coal tubs and the full tub lifting as though by the strongest of all the mining men. In appearance, on the very rare occasion that they are seen, they are said to be about the height of a one or two year old child with an oversized head dressed again as old-fashioned miners and with ancient faces. More often though they are seen as flickering blue flames that flit from coal bucket to coal bucket. It was recorded by the folklorist Wirt Sykes that for all of their labour in the mines the blue caps achieved very little as they were more interested in copying and mimicking the human miners, echoing their pickaxe noises and their laughter and their talking mocking the miners but only in jest, not to harm them. However, it is said that they do detest the sound of whistling. In Yorkshire, in the northeast of England, in the lead mines there, they were known as the ghostly shift, as they could be heard working all through the night after human miners had left the mines empty. The blue caps would never work on a Saturday though, or on Christian holidays. The miners also took these days off as a sign of mutual respect. In the mines of County Durham in the far northeast of England, there is also the Cutty Soames, Old Cutty, a more dangerous version of these mine goblins, one who would cut ropes of the mine carts, causing utter chaos and sometimes danger of death if the carts were full. We head now to Ukraine and meet a mine spirit called the Shubin. These are mainly from the Donbass region of the country where mining is a prominent industry. These creatures can be both wicked and good, and there are tales of both types, although they are mainly beneficial to the mines and the miners. There are a few ideas of where the name Shubin comes from. One is that it comes from the word coat. The Shubin is said to be covered in a thick woolen coat like fur and is himself extremely hairy. Another tale of the origin of the Shubin 
is that he was a miner, treated awfully by his fellow miners, and because of their cruelty, he was killed in a methane explosion. His spirit became the Shubin, however more of that tale later on. In yet another tale, he is named for a miner who had an uncanny ability to predict danger underground. However, what is probably the closest reason for his name is after a specialist gas worker below ground in the 1800s, whose job it was to burn off methane accumulations making the mines safe for the miners. The outfit these people would wear was a thick sheepskin jacket turned inside out for the protection against explosions. The Shubin looks like an older miner, with a dreadful lung-racking cough, a common thing in miners of older times. He has eyes that burn like fire and hairy hoofed legs. He will burst into peals of shocking laughter to scare the miners, or even grab the legs of the miners who are hard at work. He is a spirit said to live in the older, abandoned workings of the mines, travelling through them in secrecy quietly. And yet, despite this bad reputation, in some places he has a positive aspect too. Very typical in fairy lore, yeah? He is benevolent to the poor, hard and honest workers. His cruelty is dealt towards those who are arrogant or who are cruel themselves. One tale of a good shubbin was of a miner who was working a maze-like mine. As he was walking the tunnels, his light died. He was terrified, alone and in pitch darkness, and wandering hopelessly, he became completely lost. As he peered into the darkness, desperate now, he saw lights ahead, a long way off but coming closer, and then there was the shubin holding a lamp in the darkness. The miner was scared to death, but followed the strange figure as it walked the way through the strange tunnels, ahead just enough for the miner to follow safely. Finally, the shubbing guided the man to where the man could see daylight himself, and then, silently, he disappeared back into the blackness. The evil shubbing origins come from the tale of one man new to the area who was looking for work in the mines. At the local inn, he asked the miners drinking there for a job, and they said they would hire him should he pass a test. He was to light a torch in the mines and walk so far to prove himself. The inexperienced young man took this on good faith, not realising that the miners were actually using him to get rid of the gas build-up in the mine, sacrificing him to allow work for themselves the day after. The newcomer donned the traditional fur and wool coat for the task and went into the tunnels and lit the torch. The mine exploded. He was killed instantly and transformed into the evil Shubin. This particular creature craves revenge for cruelty, causing mine accidents that have taken the lives of many, many people. Peculiarly, there is another aspect of the Shubin in which this fairy creature is female. In one tale of this type of Shubin, a miner from the local region of Sverdlovsk was missing. At last, the searchers found the man naked and cold in one of the local mines. He had gone insane and was taken to be cared for in a mental hospital. Following this, other miners began to lose their minds also, and in their madness, words made out gave a description of a white queen, beautiful but untrustworthy towering above them, impossible and deadly in beauty. The mere look of this woman had driven them insane. One account from 2007 of Shubin was from a mine manager at Luhansk. He recounted he'd heard a crack. All the miners stopped working with jackhammers, but the sound, a hum now, was still there. He said it was as if someone was stomping around on a ceiling. Word spread that it was the Shubin, and he was warning of imminent danger. All of the miners threw down their tools and machinery and fled to the exit. But the mine collapsed. Some were crushed as rocks fell, but their lives were saved. The Kobold is a mine fairy creature from Germany, usually invisible, but it can take many forms, such as animals, flames, strange-looking people and candles. 
When sighted, they are described as human-like, the size of small children. Those who live in homes dress as medieval peasants, but those who dwell in the mines live within the rock itself, hunched over, ugly, and again dressed as old-fashioned miners. The mine kobold is said to live within the rock, as easily as we live in the air. Mine kobolds, those who live underground, were always regarded as wicked creatures. People would pray for protection from them in the old mining towns of Germany. They caused rock slides, caves in. They would cause rock slides, cave ins, explosions, were known to be full of mischief. The kobold would lure the hard working miners to places where there looked to be rich seams of ore glittering in the lamplight. They would work so hard taking this from the rock and bring it slowly to the surface only to find it was worthless, or at the worst, once it was smelted, even poisonous. Miners in Germany would leave gifts to the kobold to try and gain favour, or at the very least be left alone. Gold and silver offerings would be left, however sometimes even these gifts meant nothing to the kobold. The worthless at the time, or that the miners took from the rock, they named cobalt. And it is this to this very day, although we now know many uses for cobalt due to scientific discovery in chemistry. Now, we know it is a very fairy thing that the bad is usually balanced with the good, and this is the same with the cobalt, as some parts of Germany have them as beneficial beings to those working underground. However, in all cases, they must always be treated with the utmost respect. In Hungary and Bohemia, the knockings in the mines there were given over to the workings of kobolds and a warning to never enter these tunnels and yet other mine culture says they are leading miners to a good source of what they are looking for. Thank you subscribers and supporters for all your kind words, views, likes and follows. Some people have asked me how they can support the channel. Well, there are a few ways now. You can look at our merchandise shops where we have all sorts of great things with mine and Mark's art. And now you can even buy me a coffee on Ko-fi where you can also join as a member of my page and get great principles of Mark's art and folklore things every month as a thank you from us both. I have put all of the links in the description of this episode. I hope you have enjoyed this time's telling of tales. As a child, my family was often found mineral hunting and fossil hunting and rock hunting around and about the spoil tips of old English mines. It was a fascinating thing as a child and gave me my deep love of geology, of rocks, crystals and minerals. I have a lovely collection of specimens, not necessarily big pieces, but they all mean a lot to me. And I find it quite magical that these things are hidden just under our feet. There are places you can go also, inside old mines that have been opened up to the public. And I would thoroughly recommend a visit should you ever be somewhere where you could take a trip underground and be out of our own natural element. So, until next time dear friends, take care, brightest of blessings and remember, don't play with the fairy folk above or below ground, or you may end up in one of my folk tales yourself.